Hello everyone, it's May 2021 and I'm here to review the new Fly Inside Bell 47 G2 helicopter. This is the very first payware helicopter from Microsoft Flight Simulator and it has been developed by an actual Bell 47 pilot. The flight dynamics have been completely customized and run off of a separate app called Fly Inside Heli Manager which results in a very realistic and challenging helicopter experience. Installation was as easy as ever. Just run the EXE and confirm the installer is pointing to your community folder. After this, you are ready to start Microsoft Flight Simulator. Before we can fly though, we need to configure the controls and sensitivity settings. So go ahead and load in with one of the seven included Bell 47 liveries. This will allow you to use the Heli Manager app, which spells out the recommended control bindings and flight model settings. Upon loading, which can take several minutes for the first time, but after that, you will be prompted to enter your serial number. For the most part, you shouldn't have to change much if you've already been flying with Microsoft Flight Simulator. The stick I will be using is the T16000M by Thrustmaster. The aileron axis will become the cyclic roll and the elevator axis will become the cyclic pitch. Next is the yaw control, which will be working off of your rudder axis. This control will help you manage the engine torque that you will experience throughout your flight. That torque will be coming from the collective, which maps to your throttle axis. And those are the main controls that are required. If you have a complete helicopter setup, there is one more control you can map, and that is the throttle, which you can map to the propeller axis. The Bell 47 does not have a governor like modern helicopters. This means the throttle is managed by the pilot. But Flying Side understands not everyone is equipped for this kind of flying, so they did include an option to turn a governor on or off. You can turn it on or off in the Heli app or with the button on the collective. With the controls map, the next thing to look at is the sensitivity. If you haven't adjusted these, they should already be in the correct format, but just in case, verify that everything is set to 0%, all but the reactivity, which should be set to 100%. The last bit of settings we need to configure come from the Heli app. You will notice there is an easy, medium, and realistic setting. These basically determine how sensitive the helicopter will be. Easy and medium are easier, but still not easy, unless you've mastered realistic already. If you're new to helicopters, you might find easy or medium more suitable. Realistic can take some hours to get used to. I think even the most seasoned helicopter veteran will find it challenging in the beginning. For this review, we will be flying on realistic, not only to feel this helicopter, but I'd rather start on the hardest mode from the beginning so I don't have to go back and relearn the handling later. Scrolling down from the flight model settings, you have the choices to enable or disable the governor, toggle engine failures on or off, and then additional sensitivity settings for the cyclic, helicopter stability, and tail stability. There is one more settings tab, but these are non-helicopter related and pertain to how Windows should handle the app. After that, you should be all set to fly. The included manual does have some additional information about the helicopter, including the checklist, so be sure to give that a quick read too. With the setup complete, let's get up close and look at what the Bell 47 is all about. The physically based rendering textures are done beautifully inside and out. Though you spend most of the time in the cockpit, I love looking at the engine on this aircraft. The textures, the lighting, and the animations really bring it to life. The doors on this helicopter do open as well by clicking on them, but no animations, they just kind of snap open or close. The Bell 47 is also equipped with that classic red overhead light so you can see your instruments when flying at night. And if you ever get caught in the rain, the water effects on the canopy are very immersive, changing direction based on how you are flying into the precipitation. The sounds are just as impressive as the looks. I'll walk you through a quick startup and then we'll listen to the sounds from the cockpit and the exterior. So let's start by turning on the battery switch and confirming that the alternator is off. Set the magnetos to both, bring the mixture to full rich. Ensure the throttle is closed, and now you are ready to press the starter button on the collective.
gauges all seem to behave appropriately when operating the controls. Even with a simple mag check, you will see the RPMs drop as they should. With the start procedure complete, let's slowly increase the collective and get ready to apply some pedal. The torque, the ground effect can all be felt. Like I said earlier, at first you will find this helicopter challenging, maybe even frustrating, but if you stick with it, you will get better. Flying the Bell 47 is extremely sensitive, as it should be. So sensitive that when flying, I almost cannot see my physical stick even moving. That's how gentle you need to be when flying on realistic mode. Flying this helicopter requires all of your attention and focus. I found that shifting focus for even a second or two can put you in a situation that you may not recover from. If controlling the helicopter isn't difficult enough, you will also need to constantly monitor the manifold pressure or you will blow the engine. Let's go ahead and do that now for demonstration. Vortex rings are also simulated. If you're not careful applying enough forward airspeed on the scent, you can get caught in your own turbulence that will send you to the ground earlier than you wanted. So to say the least, you have a lot to think about all at once when flying this helicopter. You can also perform auto rotations in the bell. An auto rotate is similar to gliding in a fixed wing aircraft. Without the power of the engine, the rotors will turn from your forward energy. It's pretty difficult to pull off, but again, everything is practice with this helicopter. Auto rotations are something I'm still very new at, so this isn't the best example, but I gave it my best shot. Now you may have heard about another helicopter from Microsoft Flight Simulator. High Performance Group released a free Airbus H-135 months ago, showing the community that it could be done, even though the basin does not support helicopters at this moment. The first few versions were not very good, and for some that's all they remember, but now, sitting at version 092, it's become a very impressive add-on. Depending on when you see this video, the development will be even further along. I've heard some wonder, how does this free EC-135 helicopter compare to the $35 Bell 47? And the truth is, they aren't really comparable in reality. The Bell 47 is based on technology from over 70 years ago, while the EC-135 is more modern and stable. I think the EC-135 is a great starting point for anyone. If you're not sure if you'll like helicopters or not, you have nothing to lose but time in trying this out. But if you're looking for something more challenging with a great bubble canopy for taking in all the sights, then the Bell 47 is well worth the price if you plan on using it a lot. Not to say the EC-135 is not a challenge, but this Bell 47 is on another level. To some, the price of this helicopter might be a little steep. I often equate these things to how much time and fun you will have with them. Granted, I would prefer to pay a lower price, and who wouldn't? But I also don't think $35 is out of the value range for this one. If you plan on using the Bell 47 for hours and hours, then it's very well worth the money. It will always be there for you to use, too. Flying this helicopter on realistic was very satisfying. Not only for the scenic views, but you really feel like you did something challenging when you complete a flight. Once those skids leave the ground, it's a constant battle to keep the flying smooth. You're managing six or more different things all at once to accomplish your flights. In general, I can say this helicopter is well worth picking up. That is, if you think you will enjoy it. Helicopters aren't for everyone. For years, I wasn't really interested in them. I would dabble with them here and there on DCS, and Aerofly, X-Plane, but never really spent too much time beyond that. Now, with the beautiful scenery in Microsoft Flight Simulator, allowing for some fairly accurate VFR on a very large scale, I have been hooked ever since, putting more hours into the Bell 47 and EC-135 than I have been on fixed wings lately. Speaking of which, these hours aren't going to build themselves. With all that being said, I'm going to get back to flying this bird around. I want to thank you for checking out this review. For more, make sure to subscribe on YouTube. You can also follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and fselite.net. Take care, everybody. See you next time.